Hello everybody, we have our Commodore 128 program session with Mark Rifkin right now. Take it away, Mark. All right, everybody. So this idea came about during one of our uh, Southern California Commodore and Amiga Network meetings. Like, why don't we do like a class in class? <laughs> Programming and, and making a game or something. And so when I looked into this, um, I think uh, Paul yesterday at the Mega 65 presentation, he said it best, like, you know, you, when you look back at your days growing up using these computers, you kind of filter out the bad stuff. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I can just run a game. <laughs> but uh, th they uh, actually takes a lot more than a few lines of code to write anything interesting. And to write it in basic is another challenge, because, you know, basic is only so powerful, and that's why all, all games were written in assembly, or compiled to assembly. Speed and take care, take control of all the stuff, like the hard, like um, sprites and interrupts and things like that. So what I'm going to be able to create has to be typable, you know, in less than a few hours. <laughs> um, so I, I made a really simple example, and then we'll just talk about what you could do potentially. Um, you know, and I, in fact, when I did most of my programming on the C64. Um, 128 only spent a brief amount of time on, but it had all these great graphics commands. I was, you know, C64, you were always doing everything directly with pokes and peaks, and they added all the graphic commands to the 128, but by that time, I think I was either done with programming or moving on to other stuff. Um, but just to give you an idea, um, let's step out the emulator really quick here. If you remember, like, you know, learning to program from magazines like Compute and stuff, you know, I'm look, I was looking through this one here, and it's like, here's a, a, a program called Balloon Crazy. You know, there's a few lines there, but oh wait, there's a little more. You know, it's got all of this here, and you spent like all night, you're up late at night typing this stuff in, and if you made one typo, you wouldn't know until you ran it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I remember those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And at some point, these games, um, you know, they had a lot of data statements in it, because they had like sprite graphics and things like that. Um, like, or they became so complicated that um, it just didn't make sense to type it in in BASIC anymore, or even you know any other language. So they had c computed come up with this uh, machine language entry program where you were just typing in numbers. You weren't even looking at the code anymore. So like the 64 version of this game starts here, going crazy. You're just typing in strings of characters, and then when you're done, you sys whatever the code, you know, address that it was saved at, and then you run the game. You know, you're not really learning programming anymore. You're just seeing the end result, unfortunately. And this goes on. It's a page full of numbers. <laughs> another, another page. There, there we go. Fine. How many pages was that? Like four or five pages of just numbers. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. That was that was as far as you could get, unless you learned how to program, you know, the thing in, in the first place. Um, what I also did find while researching this is there's a website called Eight Bit Workshop, which has like an online programming environment. Uh, so you go in here and. Um, Second, you can pick your platform, like what computer you're running on. This loads, or not. Well, I can it long enough. But it's got uh, different platforms like uh, game consoles, arcade games, and then uh, you can do Commodore 64 in here. And it's got some basic um, examples that you can take and modify, and then hit compile and see what it looks like. But here's what we're going to do. <laughs> I'll do a few simple things. Um, Let's see, I'll go in here. I'm going to copy and paste some things, so I don't want to type everything. Yeah. But like the, um, I think someone, at least, at least twice yesterday, someone had written this game, this uh, example. So if I do, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see R, which in the 64, where did I get that right? There's a C missing. This would have been like print CHR 147. Code 147 was clear of the screen. But now you get the screen clear command. And then we'll do a print. So it didn't have CLS. I know GW Basic and Coco Basic had CLS to uh, clear yeah. the screen. So just basically alternating between, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, two different characters that are next, next to each other in the ASCII table. That's the, I think you do need a semicolon. Oh, uh, whoops. The nice thing about uh, working in BASIC is that everything is always live, so you can go back to a line and just add the semicolon. 
And then the 30, 20. We got our little maze here. It doesn't happen those two characters are right next to each other. So when you do a random number between one and zero, it either prints one or the other one. And you get a, a fun thing like that. Oh, I got the escape key. And one stop. Yeah. Oh, you don't. Yeah. You don't have one stop. Uh, stop. There we go. All right. Um, I don't know the key, the equivalent keyboard shortcuts for this emulator very well. So I'll just do that. Okay, so um, what we're going to be using is drawing stuff onto the the screen layouts, the character layout. We're not going to create. We, you can do bitmap graphics um, with Basic Seven. You can draw in circles and lines, but it has, you have to change to a different graphics mode. And at that point, you can't really see if you're typing. So you have to kind of write it, hope you got it right, run it, and then see the end result, and then switch back. So I'm going to stick to character-based stuff so we can stay in the character world. And, and if I make any mistakes, I'll just print it out. But like the commands, if there's a char command, and then you put in like the, um, I think it's like the color, the X and Y, and then the, what you want to print. So if I just put like X, or X, it'll put an X up there. <laughs> and then if you know the uh, codes, because like the, the Petsky character set has all these graphic characters in it. So you could do char, zero. Um, and then like, the, like a little round ball would be um, switch R, oops, what is it, uh, yeah, switch R, straight, uh, which one was it, it was the, two on nine, no, let me check what that is, yeah, two on nine, it's the round ball, little ball character right there, oops, come on down. Uh, and then if you want to erase something, you know, at least Petsky and ASCII, they, they share that as a uh, space is 32, character 32. So I want to erase that character. Oops. Zero, switch R, 32, and then put a space there. So that's how I can animate something. Draw it there, change where my coordinates are, draw it somewhere else, draw space where it used to be so it looks like it moved. Mm -hmm. so you're creating the illusion of movement. Um, so what I'm going to do to save a little bit of time here, is go here, go here. I'm gonna grab my little bouncing ball. Demo. Copy. Oops. And type to text. And then we'll go back to full screen mode. There we go. So let's look at this. So what I did here is we set up some variables. So variables let you store where the ball is and where I want it to go. We can make it bounce around the screen like pop. Um, then we do a screen clear. That could have happened at the beginning. So somewhere in the beginning, as long as it starts, you know, but it gets rid of everything else that's on the screen. And then we move the ball. So the first thing I do is I get rid of the ball where it was last. So the first time it runs, there's nothing there, but it's okay. We're, we're just clearing the, we're, we're writing on top of the space anyway. Then we do this 2020 and 2030 basically say, move it in the direction that it's currently going in, which is one over and one down. That's a dx and dy. Um, then if we hit the right side of the screen, bounce it back. If we hit the bottom, bounce it up. If we hit the top, bounce it down. Like basically, you have to put if commands for all the possible like, things that could potentially <coughs> happen that would make this not work, <laughs> which is hitting the edge of the screen, and make it go in the other direction. And also adjust its position, because if it's actually, if it is already off the screen, you've got to put it back on the screen, so it's still going somewhere. Uh, then we draw the ball again, the, proper, the actual ball, and then we go back to 2000, which is that rem move ball, so then we just start the whole cycle all over again. So if I hit run, oh, oh what happened? Hmm. Can we edit this? Your line numbers were earlier. Oh, yeah. right, 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 right. I should type yeah. this and I should, I should have, the yeah. ones. Hold on. Uh, stop. Let's edit that out of the video. <laughs> Um, let's get rid of 20. The, uh, so 10, 20, and 30 have to yeah. go. I should have knew. <laughs> let's list it again. There we go. Just the program we want to run. Sure, with the thousand. Yeah. Big, big dog. There we go. Well, uh, there's a thing about line numbering. So when you start writing code, you know, everything has to have a line number. And if you do 10, 20, 30, you're okay. Then, okay, I have to put something in between. All right, I'll do, I'll do 15 or 25. All right, now we can do 
14. Oh, now we're out of line numbers. So there, there's ways to reline, renumber stuff. You can, but if you just start off at 1,000 and make everything like in large increments, you have more space to stick things. But there's our ball. So you can see it's, it's drawing it and erasing it. You want to see something? Uh, I've got to figure out the uh, way keyboard. Um, if I did this, let's see, where is, um, let's go up to line 10 here. Oh, I can't put a ramp here. I can do this. Ramp. Yeah. Uh oh, that's not going to work. It's rim R. Oh, rim R. Okay. And space. So now we're not erasing the ball. We're going to get trails. That's kind of fun to see what pattern it shades up drawing. Why is it shifting? Uh, it's, the screen is scrolling. Oh, I'm going a little oh, bit too okay, far. Okay, if yeah. you draw, yeah, if you print something on the very last column, yeah. then it inserts a line after. It's as if you did enter at the bottom of the screen yeah. and it's yeah. scrolling everything up. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> okay, um, so the next part is, you know, starting to make this into a, something that's interactive. There's a couple ways to get input into the computer. Uh, there's an input command where it stops everything and says type something. So you can get it, grab a string, you can put your name in it or something like that. That way it can congratulate you when you win the game or pity you if you lose. Uh, there's also a, a command called key, which just gets, grabs a key. Whatever key you type, that it just gets that value, one, one character. Um, and then we can use that to be interactive. Um, there's also a joystick, a joy command to the joystick input. Um, I, don't, I don't have that here, but I can. I did it on my uh, 128, the actual computer. And um, what was the other thing I was going to do? Oh, so we're, we're going to draw kind of like a pong-style paddle on the side of the screen, and then we'll make the ball either hit or miss that thing. So let me go back to my program listing. And uh, first of all, let's get our 2010 back. Right there. Back in action. And then to add to this one, we're going to add the paddle. So I'll go here. And you'll see this. We'll go through it when I paste it in. Okay, back in here. So we ended up rewriting some code. We added a, another line at 1050 up there, um, adds a, a, another initial value for the paddle, puts it in the middle of the screen. We have to keep track of where that is too, our little palm paddle. Um, then I changed some lines. I got rid of 2210. That was, uh, I forget what that was, but I don't need that anymore. Uh, then I have, oh wait, that shouldn't be there. It doesn't need twos. Let me, I'll check my listing in a second. I think I need, these were, the 2016, 2070, we're supposed to make the, I think the X needs to be two here so that it, it doesn't go through the paddle because the paddle's going to be at one. It's not at zero? Oh, oh well, let, let me check here. Let me see what I've done in the full game. It's, uh, one comma zero. Zero, so it is at zero. Why was that? P plus zero, P plus one. So the Y coordinate is P plus zero, one, and two. But I think it's supposed to be two. But the X is zero. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well. If X is less than one, I think it should be X equal to one. X equal, or, or if I put X less than two. Oops. Oh. Service. But then it's never going to hit the paddle. Oh, OK. It's, it's yeah, always yeah. going to be. So this has to. I'll leave this the way it was. If it's wrong, we'll, we'll debug it. So the paddle, we're, we're just setting up a, a string variable, k. When you put a dollar sign, it makes it a string variable instead of a number. Um, then we get the variable. And then we'd say, OK, what, what did we actually press? We, we, we need to know. We actually have two variables. There's k and there's k dollar sign. That you can have two variables with the same name, but one's a string and one's a number. Um, so the, the k dollar sign is going to get us the 
carrot key that was actually pressed on the keyboard. But then we're going to convert that to its Petsky code. And if it was an up arrow, then we move our paddle up. And if it's a down arrow, we move the other way. Um, and then we, may, we do a little check here to see if we're close to the bottom or the top of the screen, because we don't want to go off the edge of the screen with our paddle. Um, and then we draw the paddle. The paddle is really simple. It's, a, it's 182, which is a vertical bar. And we're going to draw a bunch of them, three of them in a row, down the side of the screen. So this doesn't actually turn it into a game just yet, but it gives us the interactive part. It's not going to erase, though. Right. Yeah. Oh, it erased. See, we got a little bouncing paddle. But you can see now um, the yeah the uh, the ball is now moving considerably slower. The key command is taking up a little bit of processing time. And when I tried this on a native 128, it's actually slower than this. <laughs> Which but actually you would think it'd make it easier, but it's more frustrating because like every time you hit the down arrow, you're moving slow too. It's like you're trying to run in slow motion after a slow motion ball. <laughs> Um, but I'll, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Let's, let's add the, uh, the game part of this. Mm. Doesn't the 128 have like a fast mode? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, let's get our rest of our game in here. So the last part that makes it a game, or at least makes it uh, interactive, Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay. Well, it's the way it's copied and pasted that can fix that easily. And it's put because it's got those spaces in there. I'll just put the game over quotes. There. Okay. Um, so, what do we add here? Oh, we're doing the whole thing. The game part um, is up in the middle here. Let's see. It would be. Uh, And then it draws 25 copies of Game Over to sort of make, really hit, the, hit it home that you lost the game. Uh, but the part that actually makes that trigger is earlier. Um, I think I got to go to uh, 2030. There we go. So if it hits the, if X is zero, I mean it's on the left hand side, and it's within the range of the paddle, or outside the range of the paddle, sorry, it's above the paddle or below the paddle, go to 3,000 says, hey, you lost the game. So the paddle is only three characters high, so it's either going to be above or below, and um, we're doing plus three or minus two. I, I did minus two because I wanted to be a little generous. That way, if, you, if the ball is diagonally above the paddle, you'll still hit it, like the corner of the paddle. If, you, if I just did P minus one, then it would have to hit the paddle directly on those three bars, but I'm making it a little bit uh, yeah, no wiggle you know, room there. Yeah, so that's like the uh, trainer mode. <laughs> yeah, game friend, gamer friendly. Yeah. So now it's like when we're playing the uh, Satan's Hollow. You know, the uh, how many you want unlimited lives and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're waiting for the ball. Come on. Right, where's it going to be? Down here. Uh, uh, there you go. There we get it. Yeah, there you go. So that part works. <laughs> yeah. Eventually got with all that coding and how, I mean, how could you make 
say hello in, in, in basic. I mean, there are, there are ways to do some decent coding. And with sprites, you can move things pretty smoothly uh, because they're you know, one pixel increments and not character increments. Uh, but yeah, you do have to start writing like real code. Peaks and peaks. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned that there is a way to, to make a 128 go faster. And that's with the faster command. But the, I won't do it here because the faster command doesn't work in 40 column mode. I mean, it does, but it blanks the screen. So if I reboot into 80 column mode, let's close this here. And all of your coordinates are wrong. It'll, it'll take up half the screen. That's yeah. It's just um, yeah. for the demo. Yeah. going to get a syntax error on the last, that last one. Yeah. 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 Hmm. It's going to get that syntax error again. That's all right. Did at least get the yeah, still in. All right, so then we'll just fix the one line here. She's got kept in this fastest. kicks the uh, CPU into double speed, but at the sacrifice of your 40 column mode, you yep. have blank. And there were tricks you could do where you could do it temp in short bursts, you know, if you didn't mind the screen one blank. Or there's a tool that Robert told me about that is careful enough to turn on fast mode when the, when the drawing of the electron beam of the monitor you know, is in between refreshes. So every every other scan line, it's yeah. fast, fast, fast. You, know, you get a little bit more speed. Yeah. Twenty percent. Yeah. Fast. But watch out. What's amazing thing is that the 128, no software ever came out for that's using it, but it supported dual monitor at at that time. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 The the graphic command you could switch between 40 and 80 column modes really in real time. Could have, they could have written the first dual screen. Yep. But nobody could afford two separate monitors, yes. right? The monitors Back in those days. Yeah. Yeah. Really this expensive. space, or I mean, desk yeah. space, you had like these two huge yeah. monitors. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day. Now we have right. two huge 35 inch LCDs on yep. the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, it's a little more faster. faster. Yeah. That's it's actually more challenging. There we go. You know what I do is I just go and change a few lines to make it reach the other end of the screen. Yeah. Ah, there yeah. we go. <laughs> so there you go. Let's, uh, there you go. Oh, 128. I just tried your first program on the Mega 65 and it, when it tries to run the program in, in basic 65 it says screen not open. What? Oh! There's a new command in there so I have to figure that out. All right. Um, not, not basic seven? <laughs> <laughs> no, not basic seven. Basic 65, they call it. Gotta read the manual. Uh, yeah, gotta read the manual. <laughs> Any questions, guys, for, for Mark? Not right now. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you.
The Commodore Los Angeles Super Show.